Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away sins the world, have mercy on us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, the only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high. Glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who has prepared for those who love thee such good things, as past man's understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward thee, that we, loving thee in all things, and above all things, may obtain thy promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles, 10th chapter, beginning with the 44th verse. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Here endeth the lesson. Let us read together the psalm, Psalm 98, as it appears in the service leaflet. 
O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. With his own right hand and with his holy arm hath he gotten himself the victory. The Lord declared his salvation. His righteousness hath he opened, showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and truth toward the house of Israel. And all the ends of the world have seen the salvation of our God. Show yourselves joyful unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord and give thanks. Praise the Lord upon the harp. Sing to the harp with a psalm of thanksgiving. With trumpets also and qualms. O oh, show yourself joyful before the Lord, the King. Let the sea make a noise, and all that therein is, the round world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, and let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he is come to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. A reading from the first letter of John, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world? but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to thee, O Lord. As the Father has loved me, so I love you, Jesus said. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last that the Father will give you whatever you ask him for in my name. I am giving you these commands 
so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. May be seated. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. It is said that the carpenter who knows how to use a hammer, even if he is doing plumbing, will find some way to use his trusty hammer. We tend to, to use the, the tools that we know the best that define us. Now, in the week before I give a sermon, I do a deep dive into the theology that reflects that sermon text. And I have to tell you that I think the theologians miss the mark on this text. Because as I read the gospel, the word that, that jumps out at me is the word friends. We all know what a friend is although I don't know that theologians have gotten the message yet. A friend is a treasure from God. Remember when we were young and we, we found a new friend? It's as if the, the day had changed. The sun was brighter. Our hearts sort of danced in our chest. It gets more complicated as we get older. We have responsibilities, and we've got to be places, and we have to earn a living. And a friend may oftentimes seem a luxury. But I tell you, I don't think they do. I don't think they are luxuries. And I don't think Jesus thought they were luxuries either. In my mind, as I'm working with, with older folk, I teach them that among the most creative and life-giving things that they can do is to make a new friend. And I would extol that to all of you as well. Don't give up in making new friends. I want to recall a couple of foot washings to you. It was a Monday, Thursday service, and I had preached. I thought it was a good sermon, but it certainly wasn't earth shattering. And so we got ready to wash feet which is always a bit of a, a struggle because people don't like to do that or have that done to them. So I came down from the altar and in the third row at, the, at my right, there was a man named Ed. Ed had progressed in a, to a later stage of his Parkinson's disease. And Ed decided on the spur of the moment that he was going to wash someone's feet. He couldn't say that, but he indicated that with his head and his cane. And he tried to hoist himself out of his pew, and it took three other people to finally get him out of his pew and 
to the front of the altar and on his knees to wash one of the faithful's feet. And he did. It was a struggle. We were patient. We were deeply moved. It was so unexpected. It was in concert with Ed's personality that he should do such a thing. And we left the church that night and we were changed people. We who had been churchgoers for our entire life had experienced something in that moment by that struggle and that determination that when we came to church that evening, well, we had no idea. It was beyond imagining how we were going to be touched that evening. And another story about foot washing. Bridgie was an elderly Irish lady who spoke with the remnants of her brogue who was dying. And she hurt her entire body hurt. And my Aunt Velma and I went to visit her. And it was hard for Bridgie to talk. She enjoyed the visit, we knew that. So my Aunt Velma asked her if she would enjoy having her feet washed. And Bridgie indicated that yes, that would be something she would enjoy. And so my Aunt Velma got a pitcher and a basin and a couple of towels and washed Bridgie's feet. And then afterwards put ointment on her feet. And the entire room was suffused by the, by the, the scent, the herbal scent of the lotion. And I left the house and I was transformed because I had always seen this as a piece of scripture and not something that was grounded in our lives as a real thing, as something that could happen. Jesus and Monday, Thursday, in the Last Supper, told his disciples that they were his friends. And then Peter and he had an argument. I suspect it was not the first time that Peter and Jesus had an argument. And Jesus was insistent. You are my friend, Peter. You are my friend, and that comes with that comes with strings attached, and the string attached in this moment is that you will allow me to wash your feet or I will have nothing to do with you. And I suspect the look on Jesus' face was scary because Peter knew that Jesus was serious. That is my long way to get in today's gospel because Jesus is, is talking about friendship. It was a theme of his ministry. In John's gospel, friendship keeps coming up over and over and over again. You are not my servants, you are my friends. A friend lays down his life for his other friend. A woman lays down her life for her friend. It is to be hoped that we all have friends that are part of the golden bounty of our lives.
Mother Teresa talks about friendship not as something that we get something out of, but rather something that we give to another. Our friendship is for another. It too comes with strings. But the strings are just the opposite of what we oftentimes think because we are so focused on what we are getting from this friendship that we sometimes lose the sacred opportunity to do something important, maybe simple, but important for that beloved of ours whom we call friend. Now we don't have too many friends because they're time consuming. They should be. I am so confused, uh, thunderstruck, don't know what to make of it, by this concept that we have in our life right now that friend is a verb, to friend someone. Well, the word we always use was befriend, and I think that's a lovely verb. And it actually says something a little bit more because we are being in that friendship. But now we use the word friend. And it's a competitive game. How many friends do you have on Facebook? Well, I have 100, and the other person says, I have 400. Isn't that absurd? And then the ultimate way of insulting someone is to unfriend them, which is a, such a deficient word. Friendship is something that has happened since the beginning, and it didn't need new words, and it did not need an electronic technology it is person to person, look to look, voice to voice, touch to touch. The truth is that we do not long, in most cases, to see someone online, but rather to be there in person because that is the holy vocation of friendship that Jesus extols in this gospel reading and that, found, and that found fulfillment by his death on the cross with a few friends gathered round. Jesus lived out the admonition that we were to be good friends, that we would get friendship right. And that by so doing, we would emulate his ministry and the care he brought day by day to the people around him, the people whom he had made friends. So today, Jesus in the gospel, and in the days after this, gave us that holy, that holy commandment. It's what Jesus calls it, that holy commandment to be friends with other people. To lay down our lives for our friends, to be maybe even self-abnegating for them, because Nothing is more important than to care for another human being. So I encourage you this morning to take stock of your lives, to treasure your friends, maybe by name, by tell you, telling them that you love them in some fashion or another, and then to do this, 
go out and try to find a new one. Because if you can find a new, will, new friend, you are living your life in the glory that was the Son of God, for whom the entire world was his friend. Let us bless the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us. Under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified. He spake by the prophet. And I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole sake of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our primate, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that, with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Lawrence, our governor, and Brandon, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Robert, Ethan, Gabrielle, the Lay family, the Dew family, Diane, Kelly, Carolyn, Paula, Shil, Joan, David, Dean, Frank, Catherine, Gail, Aurora, Joyce, Vernon, Barb, Andrew, Thomas, Christine, Caroline, Pauline, 
Alyssa, John, Russell, Anne, Rita, Walter, Tim, Baby Scarlett and her parents, Casey Lynn, Martin, Andre, Gary, Joanne, Sigita, Claudia, Lydia, the destitute ministered to by the Sisters of St. Margaret in Haiti, those endangered by armed conflict, the unemployed, the homeless, those traveling, the imprisoned, among them Ted, Jennifer, Jean, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Norma Terry, Glennis Brown, Kemp Thomas, Philip Lynch, our deceased benefactors, those who have died by pandemic, violence, battle, or murder, and those who have died suddenly and unprepared. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of Our Lady, Blessed John, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we that we delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not ours only but the sins of the whole world. Let us greet each other with a resurrection greeting. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with our spirit. Good morning, everybody. I am so glad, and we are so glad, uh, that everyone is here this morning to be family and friends to one another. I am the new priest in charge, Neil O'Farrell. I am doing my best to meet everyone. I will meet you before I will remember your name, so bear with me. I'm doing my best. I want to send greetings and well wishes to all the mothers in our, in our church and in our circles, and all of those people, no matter what their gender is, who have provided mothers love and care and concern and support to us and to the people in our world, and for whom we are deeply, deeply grateful, and lift up a prayer.
Having said that, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very neat, right, and our boundless duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. 
Glory to thee, Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Jesus Christ, thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious de death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humbly servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through the faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain remission of our sin and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and make one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ. 
It is by him and with him. In the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Lamb of God, take us away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, grant us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that the holy mystery, and the spiritual food, the most precious body and blood of our Son and Savior Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. And that we prepare the first and foremost in the midst of the body of thy Son, and bless the company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we want to receive the Lord of the Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.